the surface. Mine is. He might be tail wrapped having that much line out. He might be. People like our host today, David, they're great fishermen because they work at it. They think like a fish. In my case, I look like a fish. Don't ride in. You've got to be able to use your skill, pitch yourself against the fish and try and just make sure that if he goes under the boat, you try and keep the line down because if the line touches the bottom of the boat, well, we're in a bit of trouble. I reckon we are in a bit of trouble because I reckon he's gone around the other side. So what I might do is just make sure I'm I can do that. No. no, I'm right. And look at that, folks. That's a very good example of what a big long rod is all about. Because a shorter rod, I reckon I would have done that. The line would have rubbed on the bottom of David's hull and she would have been all over. He's a good fish. He's just a good swimmer on light line. By Jingo, what a beautiful looking fish. That's a lovely tuna, long tail tuna. Now he's caught in the side of the gill and his mate might have taken it, but that's why he's been so difficult. This fish is not huge in any proportions in relation to tuna, but by gee, on that particular... Oh, I knew he's not small no, he's either. not small either. <laughs> on that particular... I'll tell him for you, mate. Uh, thank you very much. On that particular light line... Wow, we look at that, folks. That's a good fish, mate. Now, David, that better. is a beautiful fish. Now, I, I don't believe that thrills come much better than that. Look, I know no. that a lot of people like to catch big marlin, you know, 12 foot long, and they like to catch tuna that they sort of fight for hour upon hour upon hour. But that, to me, is just a thrashing machine. He's a good eight kilos. Yeah, isn't he just beautiful? They call him probably 18 pound in the old skull, and I'll get that out of there. That'll heal up OK when he goes back in. And I tell you what, folks, that is a great example that all's well in the ocean. And that's why we've got to protect species like this. Stop them being saned and wiped out. And if you have a good fun with them, put them back for someone else to catch. OK, David, he can go back. What well, was all worth it, mate? It was. I tell you what, you mate, me. thank you very much. Pleasure. And can I say just once again, you can walk into the local tackle store and get information like we've got. Why would you go anywhere else? As in any fishing, you must accumulate fish in a certain area so that they can compete. Otherwise, a single salmon or a single flathead would come along and just have a look at the bait. He'll size it up and he'll say, hmm, I might just give that a miss. But when you get fish competing, that is when they really let their guard down. And that's when you get that bang, bang, because his mate might come up and say, that's mine. He said, no, it's not bang. It's like kids at a Christmas party with cream puffs. This is a concoction, Rexy's concoction. Uh, folks, uh, yibba yibba, do not ask for it by name. It's a mixture of tuna, a mixture of tuna oil, and also it is a mixture of pilchards. And I tell you what, it's just got a beautiful wave uh, right up the old you know where. So what we do is we distribute it like this and we allow the wave, the wave motion to take that particular burly back out into that hole. Now I'm really up against it with that weed, but if I keep on laying, laying, laying the burly and a fish comes along, he's gonna stop. And then his mate will come along. And then all of a sudden we'll have three or four fish in there 